decided that I am the busiest minister at this conference because I'm the minister for the third sector. If you go around the conference and look, you look at the scale of the third sector at this conference. It is huge. And having worked in the sector before, and you know, <coughs> some people may be aware, it's sort of it's quoted often when I'm introduced these days. Now I've been in the third sector longer than I've been in politics. And I think if you talk to a lot of people, they may when they think about it, they'll realise the same. Um, the depth and breadth of the organisations here, and also the various organisations who are getting involved in other issues that are related to theirs are different, I think is really encouraging. So I think that gives a sense of the importance of volunteering to the community as a whole. Um, my own view is that volunteering is essential to civic society, that it gives something to society as a whole, but I don't think we've evaluated as well as we could do the impact on the individual, the volunteer. And I think that is something I think government is recognising, and we're seeing now um, government recognising the importance of the third sector in a huge way. Um, and even now, so that's increasing. I was the first, I'm the first uh, Minister of State, the role of the third sector, the role of the third sector minister has been elevated to a higher ministerial le um, level in government. Um, so I think I'm pleased to see the importance <coughs> government's placed like, in terms of the programmes, and I can give you some details, and I was going to run through them all, but if there are time for questions, I won't. But a huge important different programmes in government encouraging supporting volunteering, work on volunteering in England, to get that support, to get the research <coughs> and information. Um, and increasingly, when I'm visiting organisations around the country who encourage volunteers, support volunteers, what they've seen is a number of volunteers who see that skills base, within soft skills or they'll gain other skills, route into employment. And we're seeing that increasingly. The recession, I think, has put a huge impact on the sector as a whole. And one of the areas is on volunteers and volunteering. And curiously, the challenges it's brought are ones I think we're pleased to have. And often it's not the number of volunteers that's become an issue, it's ensuring we've got the right places and the right opportunities for volunteers. And I think there we can sort of see the, the impact on civic society of people wanting to use the skills they've got to contribute to their community. Um, I'll just say something brief about the Commission on the Future of Volunteering. There's a number of recommendations that I think are really encouraging, and they're ones that those of you who are involved in organisations with volunteers will be acutely aware of. But the importance of sustainable funding for voluntary organisations. Increasingly, I think funding has been a real issue and a difficult for organisations, and we have to look at ways, not just ensuring there's funding in the short term and medium term, but the sustainability. Funding like grassroots grants, for example, there's an endowment part of that, so it's an ongoing um, commitment that can be made. Um, with local authorities, we're increasingly seeing that relationship changing between local authorities. It's something Jeremy and I have spoken about um, on more than one occasion. Well, we actually have national indicators that are judging the relationship. We expect local authorities to be involved in the sector in decision making, to <coughs> really shape your community. Um, and there's so many organisations now in the sector that are going straight to the heart, I think, of what binds the community. That sort of community glue, the health and well-being of a society, is being undertaken and often held together in partnership with the public sector, with the third sector as well. And I think we need to look at the barriers volunteering. Um, I, we've got some, some work on going, we announced some next week. Um, about the sort of reducing the barriers for people with disabilities to volunteer. In too many cases now we're finding people with disabilities are those that are least likely to volunteer, not because they don't want to volunteer, because of the barriers that they make it more difficult for them. Um, one of the usual things I think from yourselves, for me, would be the kind of programmes of governments in place. Where are they working well? Where is there more we can do, or perhaps sometimes less we can do, to make them work better? Um, I have a saying, and listen carefully and follow me with this one. In theory, theory and practice are the same. In practice, they can be different. And we, you follow that? So if you think about it, the theory is how we want to, we've designed this to work in a certain way. But if it doesn't work in a certain way, we want to know about it to make sure it does. So I just want to conclude my remarks about the challenge to the media that I mentioned. You can take back with you today with, you, with your colleagues. But the Media Trust and John Snow today should have challenged the media industry professionals to increase the volunteer opportunities they have and to create for their professionals by 10 times. And, what, and one of the reasons for doing this 
is the thing you will recognise. It's increasing the visibility of the third sector. The third sector has this huge impact across the country. And I'm not 1,000% convinced the society generally knows what we do and what volunteers are doing out there. And so they want to sort of showcase that. If we get media people involved in volunteering, then we have an opportunity to get more showcasing, more opportunities there. Local funding volunteer centres. Interesting projects. The last, there's a um, project in Brighton, and I saw one in Thetford last week, where not the Thetford Traditional Volunteer Centre, like a CVS, but they've looked to be sustainable in providing a resource locally um, by using the money to invest. So where they've had grants some years ago, they've bought buildings, they then rent those buildings out to other organisations and a community hub. I think the community hub issue and the asset transfer deals with some of this in some cases. If people were the asset transfer programme, there's 36 organisations up and down the country, £50 million pounds government programme, 37 projects, sorry, where, where you've got a, it's a building that can be transferred to the local community, <coughs> the government supports that local community group in ensuring that building can be renovated, um, fit for purpose, so offices can be rented out, there can be um, preschool place, one I visited already will have a, um, I think it's neighbourhood watch going to rent offices in. So you've got that local base that as a volunteer, volunteer centre, community, voluntary organisations, but it's sustainable in the longer term, it's not being reliant on grants. And one of the things that I'm quite concerned about is where organisations are wholly dependent on grants, there is an uncertainty for them and it makes them very vulnerable. And what we've not seen at local level always is it being valued in the way people not recognising what the centre is doing. Now, there's two ways to look at this. One is to look at more sustainable funding in the longer term. Um, but the other one, I think, is ensuring, this thing I mentioned about the Media Trust, trying to get that profile up about it. So it's not an easy option for local authority to cut funding because they recognise the value and the commitment of the community. And the other way, I think, for local groups is to look at where there's opportunities for contracts. Um, this organisation I've mentioned has become very famous in Brighton over the last few weeks. They'll be stunned to know they're famous read this far. But the Basildon Toenail Cutters, as you know, mentioned, Tonic, has been a volunteer organisation, work out CBS and the volunteer carers, um, for, oh, as long as I can remember, they persuaded me once to have my toenails cut in the town centre in public to promote the service. Not something I'd recommend for every MP. Uh, my toenails aren't too bad. And um, so we had the, but they now, the PCT are now paying them to provide that service. They've got sustainability. And this is one of the, I think, the challenges, not just volunteers, but so many small organisations, that balance between the grants and the contracts on sustainability. So I think we're right to do everything we can to promote volunteering, but we have to make sure there's that sort of support and that structure underneath.